Greetings pen pals. We have our monthly video of this is a recap of all the pens I used each day for work. Some of these you have seen before, some of them you haven't, some of them I've done full reviews on, others I haven't. As always, if you see a particular pen that I have not done a review video on and you'd like to see it, just simply let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to see what I can do about putting a review video together for it. So without any further ado, let's get going. These are basically each of the pens I used for each day in the month of October 2020. And let's just get right to it. First up might be my favorite pen from Jinhao. I've got a lot of pens from Jinhao. Um, this might be my favorite of all. This one is the Jinhao Centennial. Very much a Parker Duofold style pen. It's got uh, a Jinhao number no. six nib in it. Great pen, cartridge converter pen. Uh, really like it quite a bit. Again, very, very Parker Duofold like um, and um, writes, writes really well. Uh, as usual with this, these Jinhao number no. six nibs, almost never disappoint me. Um, and this ink is Diamine Autumn Oak. the Jinhao Centennial. Really, really nice uh, pen. All right, next up is a handmade ebonite pen from India. This is the Gamma Hawk. It's a big, big pen, uh, kind of an oversized pen. Very simple, all black ebonite, uh, ebonite feed, all ebonite eyedropper fill pen. Really nice. So this is, uh, is the Gamma Hawk. And uh, this ink is Noodler's Socrates. Gamma Hawk, nice pen, big, big pen. Um, all right, next up is a not so big pen. This is a uh, smallish pen from uh, one of the smaller pens actually from Pelican. This is an M205, so this is a steel nib piston filled pen from Pelican. Uh, this doesn't have the original nib in it. The original nib I had from Pelican didn't write well. I did have it tuned, but it still didn't write well. Anyway, I replaced it with this other Pelican nib. So this is a double broad. Um, I don't know if you can get this pen stock in a double broad. I think you'd have to buy the, the nib afterwards, but it is a Pelican nib, but it's just not the nib that originally uh, came with the, uh, with the pen. So this is a Pelican M205. And, um, um, oh wait, did I say M205? No, 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 it's not an M205, it's an M200. Um, sorry, uh, Pelican M200. M uh, the difference between the, the, if it ends in a five in Pelican, it's rhodium plated trim. If it ends in a zero, it's gold plated trim. So this has gold plated trim. So it, and this would be an M200, not M205. Sorry about that. Um, and this ink is Edelstein. which is a Pelican made ink. And this is Edelstein's Smoky Quartz. And this is the Smoky Quartz finish of this pen. So this pen, this ink is, came in a set. It was designed to match this pen. So a very, very dark brown, translucent uh, pen with dark, very, very dark brown Pelican ink. So uh, it's an M, uh, M200 from Pelican. Um, again, Pelican bill shaped clip, all very traditional Pelican uh, look. Um, and um, again, with the Pelican uh, uh, ink as well. All right, next up is another German made pen, this time from Mont Blanc. This is the Mont Blanc 146. This is the smaller brother of the 149. They're actually the same length, believe it or not. A lot of people think this pen is shorter, but if you hold them next to each other, they're the exact same length. This pen has a smaller nib, uh, and um, it's a, um, a, 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 a le less girthy pen, but it's also a piston filler. Very, very nice pen as well. So this is a Mont Blanc 146. And this ink is Mont Blanc Irish Green. Very, 
Mont Blanc 146, smaller cousin of the, or smaller brother, however you want to look at it, or sister of the 149. All right, next up is a great, great pen from Pilot. This is the Pilot Falcon, a very kind of uh, famous pen, if you will, from, uh, from uh, Pilot, very well known pen. They make a plastic version and a metal version. This is the plastic version. It's a cartridge converter pen from Pilot. Nice pen, got a really kind of unusual shaped falcon claw style nib. Has a bunch of bounce slash flex to it, etc. So uh, it's pretty popular for that. I wouldn't call it a flex nib, but it definitely is bouncy. So this is the Pilot Falcon. And this has a 14 karat nib. And this ink is a Roshizuku Yu Yake Pilot Falcon. There you go. Very, very nice. Next up is another pen with a 14 karat nib, but a completely different pen. This is a Lamy 2000 piston filled pen from Lamy. Sort of a classic. This is a pen that uh, a lot of people recommend. If you want to get into your first gold nib pen, probably wouldn't be the first gold nib pen that I would recommend, but um, uh, that's a whole nother, that's a subject for a whole nother video someday. But um, this is a very, very nice pen. I highly recommend it. It's got a really cool clip, cool designs made out of Macrolon, which is a composite material, piston filling <coughs> pen. Really, really super, super nice pen. So this is a Lamy 2000. And this has a 14K nib as well. And um, this ink is Waterman Serenity Blue. Lamy 2000. Very, very nice. Nice pen indeed. Next up is one of my favorites. Uh, this is a Waterman Le Mans Opera 100. It's meant to kind of mimic old style chased hard rubber, although it's not. This is acrylic over brass. So this is actually a he much heavier pen than it looks. It's got some real heft to it. Pull to uncap pen with a re sna and it, uh, it snaps onto post with a really pretty 18 karat two tone nib that I just really, I just love the looks of those nibs. It has the uh, Waterman Ideal Globe logo on it. Just great pen. Love, love, love this pen. This is a Waterman Le Mans Opera 100. And this is uh, one of my favorite blue inks that I have in it. This is Ackerman Delft's Blau. Really, really nice pen. Love this one. Waterman Le Mans Opera 100. Next up is a special limited edition pen. So this is from Pen BBS Model 456, but this is the Taste the Rainbow limited edition that came out um, uh, specifically for members of the Taste the Rainbow, which is the Pen BBS fan page on Facebook. I did a whole video on this pen, goes into a lot more detail. It's a, it's a very small run, a limited edition. Uh, 456 is a widely available pen, but this has uh, a particular colorway, which was unique to this model, and it has a special nib with this sort of phoenix um, uh, 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 etching on it, which uh, is great uh, as well. So this is a vac filler with a steel nib. Really, really nice pen. So this is a Pen BBS. Oop. Pen BBS 456. And this is what we call the Taste the Rainbow Edition. Limited Edition. And um, this ink is also from Pen BBS. It's Pen BBS Chengdu Red. So there you go. Nice limited edition pen from Pen BBS. Um, limited run on these, but uh, really, really nice pen. 
All right, next up is a pen that without a limited run, this is a widely available pen. This is a Lamy Dialog 3. So this is one of these retractable nib capless ballpoint pens, much like a uh, Pilot Vanishing Point. Um, uh, operates somewhat similarly, but this is a twist. So as you can see, you twist it, has a little trap door that opens up and then the nib comes out. Same uh, bit there. Um, and this is a 14 karat gold nib from Alami. You don't have too many Alami pens with gold nibs, but this is definitely one of them. It also does something else, which I think is kind of one of the most pointless pieces of engineering there is. If you look really closely, when you extend the nib, the clip retracts ever so slightly into the pen. I personally, if you're not gonna have the clip retract all the way in. If you're just gonna have it retract that tiny minute amount, I don't really get the point of engineering that feature in it at all. But anyway, that's what they did. Um, this comes in a bunch of different finishes. I particularly like this matte black one. The nib is actually the exact same form factor as all, pretty much all Lamy fountain pen nibs. So the Safari, etc., cetera, has the same size and shape nib, except of course this is, this is gold where those are, are steel, but it's a nice two-tone gold nib in medium so it's pretty nice so this is a Lamy Dialog 3 and this has a 14k nib in medium and this ink is a Lamy blue black Lamy Dialog 3. There you go. All right, next up, another pen from Pilot. This is the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. It's kind of a somewhat small size pen from Pilot with a fairly small 14 karat uh, nib in it. It is a piston filler. You don't have too many piston fillers from Pilot these days. Um, and this one has what they call an FM, which is a, um, a fine medium uh, nib. Um, and uh, it's a pretty nice pen. Um, I, I particularly like the sort of smoky gray scheme that they have going on this one. And it's got a, like I said, a monotone uh, 14 karat um, nib, which I uh, kind of like. Um, and uh, there you go. So this is a Pilot Custom Heritage. Ninety-two, and this ink is a Roshizuku Kirasami. Um, in some quarters, they think this ink is the closest ink there is to pencil writing. I'm not so sure about that, but it is does look a lot like pencil writing. So there you go. Anyway, Pilot Custom Heritage. 92. Nice looking pen from Pilot. A little bit on the small side, but a nice pen. All right, next up is another handmade pen from India. This is the Lotus Vamza. This is really one of my favorites, mainly because this I think this material is spectacular. Vamza is uh, Sanskrit for bamboo. <clears throat> As you can see, it's made to evoke sort of a bamboo, stick of bamboo. Um, but I really love the material here. Really all handmade, beautiful, beautiful, all ebonite, great material. Has a number six size steel nib in it. This one's in uh, broad. It's a cartridge converter or eyedropper pen. Does not post. Um, and um, um, I, I, I use it with a converter, but you could eyedropper this pen. So this is a Lotus Bamza. And this ink is Ackerman S B R E Brown Lotus Bamza. Great pen, really, really like it quite a bit. And I'm really fond of this ink. If you check my brown ink video out, I just did uh, a little while ago, it features prominently in that video. Next up is another really large Indian made pen. This is another pen from Ranga. This one is acrylic. This is the Ranga Splendor. Most of my Ranga pens 
are uh, ebonite. This is one of the acrylic ones. Um, and this has a really nice number six Bach uh, steel nib in it. So this is a pretty nice uh, pen from Ranga. Big, big, big pen though. So this is, uh, as we said, this is a Ranga Splendor. And um, this has, like I said, a number six Bach nib in medium. And this ink is Monteverde chocolate pudding. Ranga Splendor, really nice uh, brown uh, acrylic. I like the way the chocolate pudding ink goes with that big, big, big pen. This one's either eyedropper or cartridge converter. I use the cartridge converter in this pen. All right, next up is a steel nib pen from Visconti. I don't have too many of these. This is the Visconti Breeze. This is a relatively inexpensive pen from Visconti that came out a while ago. It's got a spring-loaded clip with the Ponte Vecchio bridge shape on it, much like a lot of Visconti pens do. It's a Pull to uncap with magnetic closure, which I really kind of like. Cartridge converter pen with a Monteverde steel nib. Smallish nib, number five-ish size, um, but uh, pretty nice. This one is in medium. So this is a Monteverde Breeze. And this ink, which I think just goes fantastic with this pen from a color perspective, is uh, Jehoban. Vert Pre Monteverde Breeze. Really like this pen. I think I, I'm a big fan of these magnetic clips when they uh, catches when they work well, and this one does work well. All right, next up is a vintage pen. This is from um, Wherever. Wherever made really cheap pens back in the old days. They were not a high end pen maker. This is an unusual pen from Wherever in that it's really, really nice celluloid i mean really well made and it's got a 14 karat gold nib which is very unusual for wherever this is the wherever pacemaker it's the high-end pen from wherever one interesting characteristic of wherever pens they usually came with these really nice transparent feeds and this is no exception so i have red ink in here and you can see it transparent feed is picking uh that up um, it's a button filler so you push the button there to fill it. Great pen from back in uh, in the old days, but wherever was an inexpensive brand, but this is sort of a, their attempt at a moderately high-end pen. And like I said, it does have a 14 karat gold nib, and as you'll see, it writes really, really well. So this is a wherever pacemaker with a 14K nib. And this ink is um, Waterman Audacious Red. Wherever Pacemaker. I got a bunch of wherever pens. I should definitely do a video on all the wherever pens. But this is an interesting one because, like I said, they typically do not have gold nibs. So, wherever uh, Pacemaker. Really nice pen. All right, next up is a really pretty pen from Moon Man. This is the Moon Man um, M8. Um, this um, has these really, really nice material with these multicolor flecks embedded in it. Really, really nice looking pen. Uh, kind of traditional Chagas shape pen. A cartridge converter pen with a number six uh, steel nib from Moon Man. Um, uh, crescent shape breathe the whole. Haven't had a lot of luck with number six Moon Man nibs lately, um, but um, there you go. Moon, uh, you can replace these nibs easily because it's just a standard number six nib from Moon Man. Again, cartridge converter uh, pen. So there we go. So this is a Moon Man M8, and this ink is um, Twisby Prairie Green. Moon Man M8. Nice looking pen. Got uh, I like the, I like the way this feels in the hand. Very very pretty material. Just love the material on this pen. 
All right, next up is another pen from Pilot. This is the Pilot Custom Heritage 912. This is a cartridge converter pen from Pilot with a 14 um, carat nib. This is what they call the Falcon nib or the FA nib, not to be confused with the nib in the Pilot Falcon. This one has these cutouts here. Definitely a, might be one of the best modern flexi nibs that there are. Definitely has a lot of flex and bounce to it and a pretty cool um, nib. Um, really, really a big fan of, uh, of the nib on this uh, pen. Um, so this is the um, uh, uh, Pilot Custom Heritage 912 uh, and this has the um, uh, FA nib in 14 carat and you'd probably want to see it flex a little so I will be happy to oblige you so there you go you definitely get some nice little flex and some bounce in there and this ink is a Roshizuku I'm at Eero. Very nice. Pilot Custom Heritage 912. Really nice pen from Pilot. All right, next up is a pen that makes a lot of appearances in a lot of my videos because it is one of my favorites. This is a Ranga Model 5. This is a handmade Indian ebonite pen with a fantastic Bach number eight nib in 18 karat gold. This is a huge nib in broad in 18 karat gold in size eight. So it's really a big, big nib, big, big pen, really big pen. So it really balances itself out. This number eight nib just looks right sized in this pen because the pen is so big and the, and the, and the nib is so big, etc. So this is a Ranga Model 5. And um, this ink is Birmingham Fred Rogers Cardigan Red. Really like the way this ink goes with this pen. Again, this pen makes a lot of appearances in my videos because um, I just really like it. Just one of my absolute favorites. Next up is one of my absolute favorite inexpensive Chinese pens. It's a Wing Sung Model 618. I just love this. It's a steel hooded nib piston filled pen. Uh, about, I think it goes for under 20 bucks. It's a great, great pen. I really like this uh, particularly demonstrated version. I love the way the ink shows up in the feed and in the collector, etc. I just, just love this piston filled pen, Wing Sung 618. And this ink is uh, Noodler's Dragon's Napalm. Interesting ink. Um, it'll look either pink or orange, depending on the light. So it's a very interesting ink. Love this pen, though. Great, great pen. Wing Sung Model 618. All right, next up is a brand new pen. Just came out. This was a Conklin Endura uh, um, abalone limited edition pen. So this is na all natural abalone shell material with acrylic over it. So it looks like the pen is faceted. The abalone shell is faceted, but it's got an acrylic coating over it, which rounds the pen off. So it's a round pen. So it's nice. It's a screw to uncap, screw to post pen. It's got a steel Omniflex nib from Conklin. This is not a good nib. You can watch my whole review video on this. I had to work on this nib just to get it to write. Don't get this nib. Uh, you can get the, the, they make, I think every pen that Conklin makes that features this nib, you can also get a different nib in it. Do that. Don't buy this nib. It's not a good nib. So anyway, so here we have the um, uh, Conklin Endura Abalone Limited Edition.
and um, this has a steel Omniflex nib. And uh, I will show you this is literally as much as you can reasonably flex that nib. It's not much. Um, it's uh, don't just don't buy this nib. Not a good nib. But I love this pen. So I'm probably going to swap this nib out. I just recently got this pen and uh, I will at some point swap out this nib. This ink is Diamine Purple Rain. Like I said, Conklin Duraflex uh, nib, but Conklin and Dura abalone, as you can see, the material is just spectacular. So forget the nib, great pen though, in terms of material. And build, overall build quality. I like the pen. I like everything about it except the nib. All right. Next up is another pen from Pilot. It's a classic, a Pilot 78G. Inexpensive, very light, plasticky pen from Pilot with a small steel nib. But this one is in broad, and I love the way it writes. It's basically, they call it a broad, but it's basically a stub. Um, and I really, really love the way this writes. So this is a Pilot 78G, and this has a steel nib in broad. And as you can see, this is basically a stub. I mean, I really, really like the way this writes. Um, and this ink is Pilot Blue Black. Cartridge converter pen. You could eyedropper this pen if you wanted to, um, but I, I haven't. I've chosen not to do it. But again, inexpensive pen from Pilot 78G. Really, really nice, nice pen. And last pen of the month. This is the Wingsung 601A. This is a, basically a variant of a variant. Um, this uh, is a, uh, a variant on the Wingsung uh, 6. Oh, 601. This is the 601A. It comes in uh, two different nibs. You can get a tubular nib or this sort of conventional looking nib. It is a vacuumatic style pen with a piston pump on it. I did a whole full video where I recap all the different variations and stuff on it. It comes in a bunch of different materials and finishes, several different nib options, even variants in the nuances of the filling system. There's just a lot going on in terms of a wing song in this pen so I would encourage you to check out my full review video on this one like I said this is a wing song 601 a and this has a steel nib in fine and um, this ink is Krishna Hakaza. Check out my video. This ink probably has the coolest bottle of any ink made. Uh, fantastically cool bottle. Um, well, that was a lot of pens, and that will just about do it for this episode. But before I say goodbye, I would please encourage each and every one of you to please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That will be very much appreciated if you could do those things. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.